but can I have a motion to open the public forum for portfolio review? Sure. Commissioner Hassan <laughs> moves it. Can I have a second? second. Commissioner Berkeley, all in favor of opening the public portfolio review? Uh, motion passes nine to zero. Now, technically, by poli we're I've got it 44 people, and uh, there's a couple of things technically that we're that w I could cut this off at two hours. My personal instinct is to let everybody who signed up speak. So I just want you to know kind of where I'm coming from. I believe very strongly that if people show up and they have something they want to say, that it's our business <laughs> to listen. Ha having said that, on for these. Having said that, for this kind of a forum, each person literally gets five minutes. Do the math. That Do the math. So I no, I have already checked on that. I cannot change that policy. That's policy. So what I'm going to ask everybody to consider, speak your mind as quickly as you can. No, I'm not going to cut people off. I'm going to cut you off in five minutes. But consider that there's a lot of people who have strong feelings about this portfolio review. And please try to be concise. I am not going to violate the policy, but I'm going to ask you to consider your fellow citizens and try to be brief. I'm also going to remind you that there is another exact hearing next Tuesday. If when I call your name, you say, I'd like to be signed up for next week, we're going to give you first ups on next week's list. Because some of you, those of you who are number 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, you'll be here a long time. But we will be here with you. Everybody clear on this, the rules of the game? <laughs> All right. Uh, first up, I want to uh, welcome and introduce Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark. You're first. She is here. Is there, is there another city council person here yes, tonight? Yes, uh, Councilman Leon Pinkett is here. Got it. So, Mary Pat, you're, uh, excuse me, Councilwoman Clark, you're first, and then Councilman Pinkett, you'll All be right. second. All right. Sweetie Pie, you're using your minutes. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read I'm you my I'm sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to read you my letter so I can be We done. really are glad to have you here, Councilwoman <laughs> Clark. And I'm thrilled to be here. I've, I've got a chair to sit in. That's my whole thing. So I can do it. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. Uh, dear Madam President and members of the board, I'm beginning with a thanks and concluding with a please. Thanks for the opportunity to speak in support of two of the schools in my district tonight, REACH High School and Monarch Charter Academy. Thanks to our CEO and her staff, uh, joined by this honorable board, we hope, REACH High School is in the process of preserving the extraordinary athletics, teams, and sport programs which inspire so many students to attend REACH and translate to academics the lessons of hard work, teamwork, and success they learn on the fields, on the tracks, in the gymnasium of their Lake Clifton location. At the current location, REACH is on the rise in carrying on the proud tradition of the renowned Lake Clifton High School and its Alumni Association. With school system leadership and multi-agency support, we are on the verge of granting reach, reserved use of the Lake Clifton Gymnasium and Fields to ensure seamless continuity as REACH students move into the renovated Fairmount Harford building this coming fall. Also, with school system leadership and agency partners, we are backing up to move forward to provide the renovated school and its grounds with its own fields, track, and stadium, so the Lake Clifton alternative can be as short-lived as possible. It's never too late to do the right thing, and recreating uh, the required infrastructure will ensure that the move to new quarters includes the infrastructure essential to Lake Clifton's legacy and reach high school's success. In other words, we have plans, they're in the process, 
Thanks for your leadership on those planning process. The pleas is in support of Monarch Charter School. And uh, let me, to keep it brief, or just say this. Um, I'm not here to talk about the academics. I'm here to talk about the development of the community in partnership with the um, Monarch Charter School, which is underwriting and funding and, and has launched a project to develop 50 blighted houses in the neighborhood of the school in the Chum neighborhood. Um, hopefully to improve the environment in which the school is located, improve the lives of the people who will be able to affordably purchase these homes given the financing that is available. And that I think that this is a model. I know in Park Heights that um, the, create, the renovation of a school inspired the city to help renovate the houses across the street. This is in that spirit, and um, we already have five houses under reconstruction. We have five online moving through the process, city government working with Monarch School to be able to um, clear titles to uh, keep accelerating to get to 50, and we hope even more. So that's my pitch around the, the sustainability of the Monarch School, uh, its importance in this community. We have another development that uh, will, will probably be mentioned later uh, up in what we call the Tivoli Triangle. That's in Chum. That's going to be new affordable housing. Put these two projects together, and we're coming at the middle of this whole big community from both ends. And I, I am positive it will spur private redevelopment um, from all over the city of Baltimore and the region. So thank you very much for, thanks for the help that you're providing so that uh, re the uh, REACH school has comparable place to, to land. And thanks for, and please uh, consider this development project when you're looking at the decision about um, the, the Monarch Charter School. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Clark. How many, how long did I take? Five minutes. <laughs> you took the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. Thank you. Councilman Pinkett. As Councilman Pinkett comes, if anybody has a seat open next to you, can you raise your hand? Just because we have folks standing. Great. So there are some seats up here if folks want to file Maybe you in. could keep them up a little bit longer. Yeah, keep them up a little longer. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Gray. I'll be real brief. I'm, I'm going to give a couple minutes to somebody else. So I'm here to speak on behalf of the uh, portfolio review for Gilmore Elementary and William Pendehues. And I really <coughs> wanted to come this evening to to thank um, Madam President, the board, Dr. Santalisis, and uh, Ms. Alvarez and team for the process and community engagement that allowed us to arrive at the recommendation presented to the board. Um, this is really, from, from even last year, this has been my only request of the board, and I thank you for honoring that, that we would in, engage in a process that really allowed for the community to determine the direction of uh, education in Sandtown, Winchester. And I must admit that this has been a challenging period for our community as we, do, as we endeavor to commit to a course that, as I said, will determine the future direction of public education in the Sandtown Winchester community of West Baltimore. With much deliberation and debate, we believe that we've reached a proposal that is in the best interest of the students and families of Sandtown. And we wanted to thank you for your careful consideration of the community's desires which we believe are reflected in the staff's recommendation and your continued commitment and support to students in Sandtown, Winchester. And so thank you. I, I know that the job that you have before you is not an easy one, and we thank you for your, your professionalism and your careful consideration of the recommendation. Thank you. Ha, take that. <laughs> I just want to point out that you were an extra person, so not only did you not give back minutes, you took minutes. <laughs> But again, we're happy to see you, Councilman Pinkett. <laughs> All right, our next, our next guest is uh, Danny Hawkins. Sir? Hi, 
<laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh, once again, thank you for having me. I'm Danny Hopkins. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I, I'm a minister, obviously. I oversee an international ministry, and I also run a private educational agency. I'm here as, as a business owner, as a community member, a stakeholder, and educator to speak in favor of NAFA. I've been doing this for a long time, overseeing schools in five different countries. I understand it's a difficult situation when the board has to meet to close schools. We're all educators. We believe in the power of education, and it's really difficult when we have to close a school. But with the limited funding, right, we have to make that decision. I've been there. It keeps us up at night. As the commissioner mentioned, you reread documents, you second guess yourself, right? I understand that. I'll get to the point. We got involved with NACA in May. My wife is a teacher. I looked at the portfolio and it mentioned FERPA violations. Well, we offered our service free of charge. We usually get paid. Our last service was at a public school in Springfield, Missouri. They were the lowest performing school in the state of Missouri. They were a focus and they were on the verge of losing Title I funding. In one year, we got that score on the top performance, second, second to a, an international school. And for that, I got an Educator of the Year award. So the point is, FERPA, I didn't find a violation listed on the Federal Privacy Office, which oversees FERPA, but it is of a concern of the commissioner, the board. So we developed a program in place where all of our volunteers are going to be certified by the Department of Education to handle personal information, the PII, SPI. So that's in process now. I'm certified by FERPA and HIPAA and all our volunteers. We're also teaching our, our families, our students, what their rights are. We also teach them what's in the family guide, what you guys designated as directory information, which is a lot for them to just take in. Secondly, I want you to be aware of programs being implemented, programs that classroom instruction in Portuguese and Spanish. The pin pal programs that were implemented this year where students are now communicating with Brazilian students and our contacts in South America, that's going to expand to Kenya, India, Zimbabwe. You can be one of the only school districts in Maryland to have that. We have one school in Missouri that we did it, and they're the only one in Missouri. We're offering that free through NACA, and we're glad we expand it to anybody that wants it. So we also see that principal will be implementing new leadership change, bringing teachers aboard to, on committees to make the leadership decisions. She implemented programs as like the DEAR program, Drop Everything and Read. It's a fun thing for students and their family, and I'm running out of time. May I, may I jump in for one moment? Yes, go ahead. Just would like to make sure that you're aware of our credentials. Uh, yeah. There are lots of new board members. My training mm -hmm. is from the University of Virginia. That's my yeah. Bachelor of Arts degree, Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, English, literature, and grammar, and then also a minor in uh, religious studies focusing on African. Uh, religious systems. Masters of Divinity from Wesley Theological Seminary and the PhD from Temple University. Uh, Reverend Hawkins, his training comes for com uh, from Columbia University and Princeton University. He holds degrees from those places. He's a humble man, but we want to make sure that you guys are aware of our credentials and our training. Uh, and as said, Mrs. Hawkins is uh, taking the, the uh, rather the educational doctorate at Hopkins now. And she is an a brilliant writer and an incredible teacher. You should see some of her written documents, and you probably will see them soon. It's peer review, too. That's 
So I appreciate the time. My point is NACA is listening to you, the board, and we want to work together. We're here for the students. We want a collaborative relationship, not a fighting. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I've just been advised by our council. Um, you, you guys are good. Okay. Just been advised by our council that there is a, an opportunity, and I, I'm only doing this because of the the hour and the, the desire to hear from everybody. While the policy uh, uh, allows five minutes, um, I uh, a board member is allowed to make a motion to uh, have a temporary change to a policy. Um, I'd like to ask if there's a motion um, for tonight's meeting to ask people to limit their public comment to three minutes so that we can, in fact, hear from everybody. Motion from Commissioner Frank. Do I have a second? Second from Commissioner Bondima. All in favor? Uh, no, you have to raise your hand. I, I want to, because I, I don't think everybody's for this. Uh, Commissioner Hassan, Commissioner Bondima, Chinia, Kashani, uh, Frank, Berkeley, uh, Richardson. That's 7-4. Uh, All opposed? Commissioner McFadden. Um, any abstentions? If this is a policy. I believe you're allowed to vote on this, Joshua. Oh, I just wasn't sure. Yeah. Do you, do you want to vote for it or against it? Uh, against it. So 7-4, uh, uh, two opposed, one absent. Uh, I'm not trying to disrespect people. I'm just asking people to be a little bit more succinct um, just because of the, the sheer number of people that want to speak. Thank you. So with that, um, the next our next guest is uh, Miracle Haney. Did I say that right? It's Harvey. Harvey. Oh, I'm sorry. Miracle Harvey. Yes. I was worried more about the first name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening. I am a former NACA 1 student, and I'm here to talk about my experience at NACA. I came to NACA when I was in fourth grade, and I was in the first graduated class of NACA 1. NACA taught me how to be myself and how to love myself. NACA has a freedom and democracy course where I was taught who, about who I was and where I came from. When I was at NACA, I had people there that I could turn to when I couldn't even go to my own family. <sighs> my apologies. NACA is my family. And that's what you don't get in a lot of Baltimore City schools. And to hear that NACA is one of the ones that are that is recommended to close, I feel that making that decision will take away from our community. And the last thing we need is to take away another charter school from our community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Haney. Our next guest is um, Lucian Hawkins. Let me guess. <laughs> Luciani, but a little ah, short, that's all right. Luciani. I, 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 that's bad that I missed that one. Thank you. So I'm speaking on behalf of NACA. I am an educator. Uh, I'm also a, a candidate, a uh, doctor candidate at Johns Hopkins University. Um, as a doctoral candidate at Johns Hopkins University, I am also an educational researcher. So everything quickly that I'm going to say is going to be based on research, and I can provide that data as necessary if you, is your cho you, you would like to have that. So uh, if you hear from our students like you already did from prior students, one thing that our school and our students value is that community. So I'm here to just to, to revisit and to remind why we were open to start with. So, and I would like to make a quick, I'm going to read a quick little uh, quotation from uh, uh, Dr. Um, Hassan. You, you place uh, with your biography, you use uh, one of Paulo Freire's quotation, which I'm Brazilian, so I'm very familiar with his work. Particip participatory, critical, student-centered, culturally relevant, experiential, research-minded, and interdisciplinary education is essential to community developer by him. I couldn't be and I couldn't agree more. And NACA followed uh, the education system of um, black schools before segregation was ended. So we had a, we have a, the academics, what we have a presented, and we have higher uh, um, standards for us, uh, our students. But we also provide something that 
you can't find in many other places, which is a strong character, culturally minded education that provides their students not only with the academic knowledge they need to, to overcome and to uh, get good jobs in the future, but also the um, the pride, the cultural pride, the cultural understanding of their identity as a black children, and not only as black children, I'm not a black woman, but I am a multicultural woman, and in our schools, our teachers are diverse when you visit, uh, and our students are learning from this diverse uh, background. So, um, so when they are in our, in our school, they're going to leave strong learners and strong individuals. Like we had the back ago in the 60s, we had a, a, a group of a citizens who are strongly minded, able to implement the civil rights movement and go forward from there. Our students will ha is, are receiving that same type of education. They, they are going to leave aware of who they are, aware of reality of discrimination, but they will not be limited to that. They will know how to overcome such discrimination and find themselves as uh, better learners and, and scholars. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hawkins. Sorry, I, I speak three languages, so it, it get, when I get like, in, a, in a hurry, it's like that. No, you're good. You're good. And uh, just one last thing. Uh, the Spanish and Portuguese are the curriculum I wrote, and I'm qualified to write curriculum. I have already implemented curriculum in Springfield, Missouri, and uh, being published a peer review. So, mm, don't forget sorry. your book. Um, our next guest is Sydney Newkirk. Ah, oh, sweetie. Hi, Sydney. Superintendent Santelices and Commissioners. My name is Sydney Newkirk and I am a fifth grade scholar at the Northwood Apple Community Academy. I am the recipient of Principals and Honor Roll Awards, a member of the NACA Freedom Choir, the Student Leadership Council, and the manager of our recycling team. I too am from a line of proud NACA scholars. And speaking of family, to me, NACA is like one huge family. I have been a scholar since the kindergarten, and what I like the most about NACA is that I've never seen a teacher or staff member give up on any student. They live by the NACA principles that they teach us and focus on every month. Principles like respect, responsibility, self-esteem, courage, fairness, and perseverance. This is a part of our superior character development curriculum. The other very important part of our NACA curriculum is learning all about the democratic, the democratic process in our country. Not only that, but putting that knowledge into practice by using this entire process, campaigning, making speeches, making campaign posters for our very own NACA election to choose our grade level and classroom representatives. At NACA, we have been taught the importance of letting our voices be heard. It's like we recite every morning in the NACA pledge, I have a voice in this world. So this evening, I respectfully ask you to hear our voices when we ask that you not close down our school. Even though we are young, <laughs> NACA is growing a citizens who are willing and able to make a positive difference in our communities. Thank you for your time. Oh no, I don't doubt for a minute. I do not doubt for a minute that Sydney did that on her own. Thank you very much. Our next guest is Daniel Knott. Good evening, Superintendent Santa Lisa and Commissioners. I am Dan and I, I attend the Northwood Apple Community Academy. I am I am the third of four proud NACA scholars in my family. I have received honor roll and citizenship awards and I have currently served 
I currently serve on the NACA Student Leadership Council as the grade level representative of the fifth grade. The three pillars of NACA are superior academics, superior character development, and freedom and democracy, whereas as scholars we are reminded every day. Our teachers, our teachers' expectation is that nothing but your very best will do. Their goal and our goal is to be able to perform above the standard. The, this is evident in my over my, this is evident in my personal overall academic growth. One of the grades that was most challenging for me was the first grade. I struggled, but because of supportive and dedicated teachers and my own hard work, I know I I am now working at grade level. In addition, through our freedom and democracy curriculum curriculum, curriculum I have learned so much about our ancestors in our in our history. That is not, it has not only inspired me, but it has empowered me to set my goals high and to work hard to attain them. Finally, what I, what I like most about NACA is how everyone, every adult from our teachers, the administrative staff, food service staff, custodial staff, to security staff, and is super supportive and takes an active role in the personal success of each and every NACA scholar. It is truly the village that many people talk about, but never gets to experience. Therefore, I sit here this evening respectfully asking you to not close the doors on our school. I promise you that NACA scholars are steadily climbing the ladder of academic success. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I just want to note that the students have set the bar. Our next guest is Michael Susco. Greetings, commissioners. Um, my name is Michael Susco, and I'm uh, representing the Roots and Branches Charter School. I was a founder parent about eight years ago, ended up working four years at the school, and I'm currently on the board of directors. I was going to read an op-ed that, that was published in today's Sun, Sun that I wrote, but I'll give a copy to the board. But I decided I would try to speak a little bit from my heart and, and from my story, which means I might stumble. And I mentioned it to my friends, and they said, well, we'll stumble together. But anyway, if I had to condense it even further, I would say there's about three or four main things. One is the great thing about the school, having worked there, is its arts integration, how it makes learning fun. And there's just so many examples of that. But like for one is you could learn about the clouds and do low dance movements for the cumulus clouds, middle movements for the uh, cumulus. I think stratus is the lowest, and then cumulus, and then cirrus. So you would learn principles of dance, but also learn science. And it's just a, uh, kids learn through their bodies. They learn when it's fun, and I've just seen it work. It's very creative and expressive. It's just so dynamic, and it is done very well at Roots and Branches. Uh, you have great programming or good programming there. It's a living entity. It's very easy to stop it and to end it, but it's a hard thing to really build it and have it grow. And it's something that's a living entity there, and it's a very good program there. Uh, we did a film recently at a professional film crew come in that we hope to have by the second hearing. And one thing I heard from the parents and the students is that they wanted to go, that the kids want to go to the school. And even the parents, they would hear about the work, and one parent said, I want to go to the school. So it's, it's, that's a good, it's a good thing when the kids want to learn. If there's one thing you're going to do in school, it's not all that you, you know, the, the content always, it's the desire to learn, that you're going to continue on with your life. You're still going to read books after you're out of school. And I feel that's the type of child that we're making at Roots and Branches or, or developing. The other thing is confidence building, something maybe not quite measured by testing. It's can the, what, what does the kid feel capable of doing, and how, is they, how are they going to carry that into life? Like one child, I remember, they were, it was sitting there with just his pencil and crayons on the, on the table, and I said, what's the matter? He says, I don't know how to draw. You know, just didn't think he could do it. But by the end of the year, that kid was very confident, building all sorts of things, drawing. That's, that's what we want to see with the school. What, the way the kids sometimes put it in the film was, uh, you know, some schools don't give you chances. Roots and Branches gives you a second chance. So it's a, it's a small environment, small school where people feel confident to develop. 
Um, and there's growth. That's a big thing in terms of testing. You know, you can start real high and maybe stay in the middling and just get a little bit more. Or you can have testing that shows 30% growth over three years. By fifth grade, 85% at grade level. So it's where you end up and how much growth is so critical. So what's stopping us? Well, there are certain challenges. There's, there's money issues. There's keeping your enrollment up. We've partnered with BTN in order to, to fill in that issue some and to work further. The board needs to do more work. So there are challenges, but what I would like to say, and it's in the op-ed article, and one child was drew some uh, art based on a famous artist, and, um, and they were asked, well, what's next? What's next? And she said, I think that the, these um, animal humans will sing. So I hope we can keep roots and branches open, that the children will keep singing. And so I'd like to share this op-ed with you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is Ayanna McLean. Good evening. Uh -oh. Good evening. Good evening. All right, I'm in place. I will not hold you all long. Good evening again. I am Miss McLean, the current leader at Independence School Local One. Independence is home for our students. It too has recently become home for several other students who have transferred into our learning community after experiencing emotional hardships within their, within their originally assigned schools to include several of our interest criteria high schools. At Independence, we support our students with social emotional learning activities and lessons that strengthen our school climate as well as give our students a voice. Our students view their learning community as a safe place where they feel connected to the staff and their peers. Many of our students suffer with social emotional needs that are best nurtured and maintained in a small learning environment with reduced stimuli. The students look forward to coming to school daily. They love learning, they love their learning environment and often refer to it as a home away from home. As the newest leader to independence, I understand the board's concerns around the progress of the school. I understand the findings presented by MSDE, and I too have a fond respect for this process as it filters out what is best for students. Our students today represent our tomorrow. The skills we equipped our young learners with is what they will ultimately use to lead us in the very near future. This can't be done without a sense of community. As the leader, I do understand that we can't get this step wrong. We need a little more time. We need time to develop data that reflects what has happened within independence since the beginning of this school year. We need an opportunity to address the weaker components of our program with fidelity. With a new leader and new staff in place, four months has not provided us a timeline that we would like in order to show that we are working and that our trajectory is moving upward. I am here to ask that you support our school family as we diligently work on improving our areas of concerns. We have supportive parents who are invested in their children remaining at independence. As a staff, we greet approximately 140 students daily who want to attend our schools, who want to be engaged, and who desire to be positive contributors in their school community as well as society. I will hold you no further. A video message from the independence family has been forwarded to your email addresses. Please receive this video as my final, I thought I had five minutes, three minutes to address the school board. Thank you again. Thank you. Are, are one of you ladies, Adrian Salaza? Uh, there we go. <laughs> Adrian, you're up next. Dear Baltimore City School members, my name is Adriana Salazar and I'm a junior at Independence High School. In my short time at Independence, the students and staff helped me grow academically, behaviorally, and emotionally. 
academically, I got the extra help that I need because of how many people are in my classes. Coming in as a ninth grader, I struggle at math. I feel thankful for, ex for the extra help I'm able to receive. I love the exhibitions that we have every semester at my school in place of tests where I get to use what I've learned. It helps me improve when I get the chance to talk to my teachers about how I've grown over the course of the, of the, of the semester with my mom at our conferences. Each semester at Dependence has also helped me improve my behavior and control my emotions. Because of various challenges I've incurred in my life, yes, I have my emotional days when I do not want to be bothered, but at the end I can sit down and talk to my staff and enjoy the remainder of the day. In our small school, my parents and teachers know how to keep me calm. I look to our principal, Ms. McLean, for support. In addition to my IEP and English teacher, Ms. Hubbard, my teachers can tell when I need a time out and time to think, and I feel comfortable to reach out when I don't feel right. This is important because if I have concerns, I can open up and talk to my staff about it. When I found out that the advisory board recommended we should be shut down, I felt very angry and upset because I came a long way from other schools I've been to. This school has been the best for me because I, f I faced my own flaws and the staff helped me with the challenging situations I have. It's better than a regular public school because when we have activities that's, that regular school does not have, such as outward-bound exhibitions and, un and unique electives, also before entering the new building, connections, uh, connections allowed us to merge and play sports. I played volleyball and me being with other students, they welcomed me to be a part of. And as as well, we moved into our new building. I've attended volleyball again, and now I'm running track. I'm so happy to be here, and it will hurt me to walk away. I would love to finish my last year here at Independence. Independence matters. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you. And let me guess, Kalia? Yeah, there you go. Come, come, come. Good evening, family, friends, and board members. My name is Kalia Robinson, and today I will be using an analogy to explain the impact Independence Local One High had on a young lady. There was a seed that was planted. This particular seed was nourished, and it began to grow and soon blossomed into a young lady, the, a young lady I know today as my older sister. During her time here in Independence, I watched her grow into a beautiful individual that I never in a million years could have imagined. She started to socialize with her peers and participate in extracurricular activities, but there are plenty of other flowers that also attend this school. Each flower with its own uniqueness, which makes them stand out. Independence is home. So why would you want to walk into, a, walk into this garden and cut off each of these flowers and pre prevent their blossoming? Why would you want to stop their growth? Closing out school would stop the development of this beautiful arrangement of flowers. Independence also helped me grow as an individual. Walking into Independence, I had a lot of pressure on my shoulders, and the staff helped me overcome, overcome being parentified. As a daughter, wait, as a young, as a young sister, my my older sister was very dependent on me. And coming to Independence helped me gain my own identity and not be in my sister's shadow. Independence helped me excel as a young lady. Now I know how to control my emotions versus being in other schools and acting out. Independence taught me my worth and let me know that no matter how hard life may get, to always remember that I would always matter. That I, can't let, that I can't let my past define me as a young lady, as a student, as a daughter, and as a sister. What other school do you know that's going to make everyone feel welcome? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. There is one other person. Uh, uh, is, is Kevin Kane? He left. He left. Yes, OK. Um, do you want us to, to, should I make a note to put him on the list for next? No, I think he's gone for the evening. OK, so if, you, if he wants to speak next Tuesday, just, yes. just let him know. Um, so Kai, Kaya Smith? Kaya. Kaya? Kaya. Thank you. Ms. Smith? Good afternoon, families, friends, and board members. My name is Kaya Smith, and I'm here on the behalf of Independence High Local 1. This is my first year attending Independence, and my journey so far has been pleasant. I've made friends and staff members who have welcomed me with open arms. I've learned to control myself. I like the environment that I'm in. I've never really liked big schools. Independence is a small school. I could focus more better. The school also fulfills my acceptance expectations. I am a 10th grade student and new to this new to the school and nothing here made me feel unwelcome. Okay. 
Thank you. Now, I'm going to apologize with the next name. Um, so, Ms. McLean, maybe you can help me. Um, you, you Zanin? Yaz Yazaman. Hello. Yazaman. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to Hi. see you again, too. <laughs> OK, so um, I've been at Independence for four years. And for as long as I've been here, I always felt the same about the school. I've always felt comfortable here and safe. The staff and the environment is very welcoming. It's very easy to stand out and to make an impression here, or as at other schools, students have to compete for recognition and their voice to be heard. The students and independents are known for everyone, are known by everyone, which gives them a sense of belonging and acceptance. At other schools, students are easily lost and forgotten about, which can lead to depression, anxiety, or worse. Students need to be heard and listened to. We need to have that support that lets us know that we're being taken care of and that, it's, and that we're feeling stressed. If we're feeling stressed, we have someone to talk to. Students have that reassurance of independence. Students and independence get those relationships and interactions with people in their age group and people outside the age group. For example, students in our school and different grades can socialize with each other, whereas in other schools, people in different grades don't respect each other. The school has a new building, new staff, new equipment, and new opportunities. Give the students a chance to fully experience the privileges that other schools are provided. Let the school reach its full potential. Let the staff have the opportunity to fulfill the needs of the students. It wouldn't be fair to close the school because of past data. If you are to close the school, what are you, doing, what are you going to do to ensure community where the students can get the same safety, relationships, respect, education, and support that independence provides? Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Skip, skip, excuse me, we have a uh, Could you stay for a minute? <laughs> could you pronounce your name for me again, please? Yazamon Jackson. Yazamon. Yes. Thank you. You're in your senior year there? Yes. OK, talk to me. I, I, I did hear you talk about respect and relationships and what the school does for you. But I want to hear you talk about where you are right now as far as academics are concerned mm -hmm. and your plans to move on to um, um, to college, if that's your choice. Yes. And, and have you made that decision what you want to do? I want to hear you talk about that a little bit and how the school has prepared you for those. OK, so I always pretty much knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know what I wanted to major in. Mm -hmm. I know now I want to um, I want to be a veterinarian when I get older. So I want to double major in veterinary science and English. But coming to independence helped me really figure out what I wanted to do by talking to the teachers and their experiences and what they learned in college. And a lot of people are like, oh, college isn't easy. It's so expensive. But like, no one actually talks about how it's hard and how expensive it is. And at Independence, they actually like tell you how, like, they tell you how the experience is in college so that you can prepare yourself to go there. And academic-wise, I have always been, I haven't really been scholarly growing up. Like, I always felt insecure with my, my knowledge. Like, I had an a, a older sister that um, she was, like, the golden child of the family. She was the, oh, she's so smart and talented, and she does all these amazing things. And where I fell into the category, I wasn't, um, like, looked at that's the same way. So I always felt like I couldn't do something or I wasn't capable of doing something because no one expected it of me. But when I came to Independence, I started to have my own identity, and I wasn't Yamani's little sister anymore. I was Yazamon, and I started to interact with other students, and I started to join more clubs and get to know people, and people got to know me for my, for my personality. So academic-wise, I've learned more. I've put myself into education more than I used to. Like, I take it more seriously now, and I know that I want to go to college. So I say, OK, you don't want to go to college. What do you have to do? What do you have to talk? Who do you have to talk to? What do you have to study? I looked all of that up, and I actually put myself to work. Like, I am a bit stressed now, but it's not a bad stress. It's a more, I know that when all this is over, I'll be really relieved that I worked this hard to get to where I have to go. Because if I procrastinate at times, and I need to I'm still pushing myself to get to where I need to be. And independence helps me with that, because when I do feel stressed, I can talk to them, and they will help me sit down and re, 
what's the word, um, recenter myself and to figure out what it is that I have to do. And I've learned a lot here, not just like for my personal life, but the things that they teach. Like, um, let me see, for this English class, I learned more about the, um, I learned more about the concept of double consciousness. Like I haven't really heard the term before. I heard the term of code switching, but I didn't really understand what it meant until we started to discuss it in class. And I understand that as a black person, that's something that we'll have to that what we'll have to learn to do in the future setting or a professional setting, because otherwise we won't be taken seriously. So that's some of the things that I've been learning now. So yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm. Um, ne our next guest, uh, you might want to hang. Yeah, um, Brishana, Brishana Castle. is Brashana Castle. I started independence last year. I went through a lot. Like, I couldn't go. I only went one day. And when, and when, when I came back this year, I didn't think I would make it, but I did. She, I have the best staff, the best teachers, the best principal I could ever ask for. I never felt I felt important when I went to school, but Miss McLean, she really like she's a lifesaver. I never could go to a principal and express my feelings. But she understands me in ways that no one else could. When I went, my first day, the independence this year, I was terrified. I did not want to have another anxiety attack, another meltdown, another breakdown. But when I went there, I felt really at home. Like, I was there forever. And you would be really, really heartless to close down this school, to take away from these kids that have nothing. Independence could be their only way out. You don't know what they're going through at home, you have no idea. And independence could be their only salvation, their only solace. I just want to thank, thank my you. teachers. Thank you. Mr. Carter, <laughs> Mr. Coinby, Mr. Vinson. I would like to thank my principal my social worker, <laughs> Mr. Fred, <laughs> Mr. Clay, <laughs> and all the independent students that came here tonight. Thank you. Mr. Caldwell Jackson, I love you. <laughs> Principal McLean, you, you, you should stay. I should stay. You should stay. Okay, I'll stay. Our next guest, and I, I, I want to make sure I get the name, Ma, Mahasia. Mahasin. Ma, oh, oh, great. Mahasin, I can't say your last name. Can you say your last name, too? Leek. Oh, Leek, just mm -hmm. like it looks. Okay. All right, I'm back again. Hello. Hello. I was here last year. I'm still fighting for my two sons. 
I currently have two sons, a senior that's graduated, yes, going to be entering B triple C and then eventually transferring to cop and my alma mater. And then I have my youngest son. Oh, my oldest son came up last year. He didn't want to come up. So this is my senior. Um, I hope he'll tell you about the school and why he loves it. I'm just going to tell you the school from my youngest son eyes. My youngest son was born, and before he was two years old, he had 15 febrile seizures. So the neurologist told me at three, mom, get him in activities, do something, because he's going to struggle in school, and you're going to have a difficult time. And that was nothing furthest from the truth. My youngest son absolutely hated school. Through elementary school, I know it's not a proper thing for a parent to do, but I bribed my son to go to school. And I said to him, if you do a good job, mommy will take you to the school, to the store. By eighth grade, I was like, that's it. My son's not going to be a statistic. When he gets 16, he's going to Free State Academy, military school. He came to Independence last year. And like they say, it takes a village to raise a child. The school embraced him. I told the teachers there, at 16, he's gone. He's not getting it. That same young man is in a sophomore year and came home two weeks ago and said, Mom, I'm going to Coppin and I'm going to graduate. He would not have said that if he was not at Independence. Independence gives him what he needs. It does not focus on you can't do this. When they see a child struggling, and that same child that slides down in the seat pulls their hood up over their head because they don't understand. They're going to them. And I get it. The test stores might not be where they need to be, but they're focused and they're working on them. And then my question to you is, you close independence, where does my son go? Where does he go? Does he now become a statistic and hold up the walls in Baltimore City? Because that's not what I want. So help me get him to copping because that's what he said out of his mouth. You got anything to say? <laughs> this is big. This is big. This is, this is what I want you to understand. This is the boy that was going to Free State. I don't know if you know what Free State is. It's a military school for kids who feel like they, can't, they couldn't make it. And that's where I was sending him. And that same young man has the ambition to go to college. Please look at this school and see what, listen to these kids and what they're telling you. They need independence and independence matters. Sir, do you. <laughs> Just take a minute. I'm here. Okay. okay. I've been to two schools. I've been to, and both schools I've been to, I had a hard time. Teachers, teachers at my both schools I went to didn't even help me as independent said. Uh, I came to Independence last year. Last year I had got all the help I got, and I can prove to you why. Because back in when I attended the other two school, I wasn't doing good at academic. But if you check my report cards from last year and the beginning of this school year, and all my teachers will tell you this year. I have did much better than my first two years of high school starting. And that's because independence, the teachers, they, they understand when you don't get it, they know that you have the potential, but they're not going to stop. They're not going to give up. They know exactly that what you are doing, and they know that you have the exact potential. Ms. McLean, as a principal, will ask why I actually feel, uh, I feel that she's doing a great job because not only does she look out for her students, she look out for the school, she look out for her community, because that's what it takes to be a principal. Mm -hmm. And I want to be a teacher, and as I sit here and I look at it, and I do have two role models teachers that I look up to. One is Mr. Carbon over there. <laughs> and, and the other one goes to Mr. Johnson, because I want to be a math teacher. And I want to, and my goal is not just to be the teacher and teach in education. I want to get those kids into college. I want to put them in good school. And if you close down independence, that's an example I can't do. I can't continue and, and, and sit there. And I have to tell the students, 
in a couple of years from now and when they ask you you know why why do you feel so down and i'm gonna look at them because i'm like because all the good schools that you could attend are not there for you mm. because some schools out there they won't care or pay in mind to any of the students independence definitely cares of what you said and they <laughs> definitely have a voice and they know you have it because that they wouldn't be there if they didn't thank you very much Our next guest is Vincent Quimby. <laughs> Principal McLean, you can move if you want. Okay, I just, you I'm dismissed now. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you need me no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I couldn't tell the difference between the student signatures and the adult signatures, and you seemed like you wanted to support the kids. So. Yeah. Thank you. Well, they quit making us right cursive, you know. So. <laughs> Believe um, me, I can tell. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Um, well, that's that's a tough lineup to follow. Um, I'm new to the uh, state of Maryland. Um, I'm an advocate strongly, um, as well as a teacher of independence. Um, I'm here for the main reason, for the children. Um, I feel like I have a new family. I have a... Uh, I'm a heartful guy, so I gotta take a minute. Um, it's okay. I'm dedicated. Uh, we have a new new family. The kids, I have grandkids and so forth. So I get attached, you know, real quickly. Um, we have a new home. That's cool, um, as the kids would say. Um, so basically, I'm here to ask, not take what you've given us. Give us time to work with it. Um, uh, our, our children come every day looking for something new. Because most of them don't have a clue what the fu future holds for them. So educating them, tell them the opportunities they have. Um, we're not just teachers. We're mentors. Uh, we love them, and we try to direct them to the best that we can for their future and for their success. Uh, most of them come to school every day because... They see a smiling face, new challenges. Every day's not the best day, but they wait for the good ones. Um, my goal is to see them learn, see them move forward, go to college. I'm a first generation college grad. <clears throat> So I'm a statistic. <laughs> so I feel if you show the kids the light and you have people willing to show them the map, most of them will follow. They got to have something to go to school for. Um, other than that, most of them chose at school because it's close to home. It's what they know. got off my directions of uh, path, but other than that, uh, I wish you guys would reconsider and listen to the kids. Their future depends on all of us. That's it. Thank you. Our next guest is Shaquille Car Karun? Carbon. Yes. Can, can I just make a clarification before you start that um, there is no recommendation for um, independence yet. The recommendation is pending. So I, I, there's just been testimony that we hope you change our recommendation, but there is not a recommendation um, developed yet. So there was a different process for independence. There was a report that needed to come that has come, and now there's work, there's staff work reviewing that and developing recommendations. So I just wanted to clarify for the public. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, thanks, uh, Ms. Perkins Cohen. I'm sorry, I screwed up your last name. It's okay. <clears throat> so I was a bit um, trepidatious about speaking because the last time I spoke before the school board, it was to keep my alma mater, Northwestern High School, open. 
Um, <laughs> but um, we'll see how that goes. Um, I would have wished that Dr. Santelises was in here. Um, I had first met Dr. Santelises as a senior at Northwestern High School and an advocate for, with the Baltimore Algebra Project. And I remember an activist by the name of Kim Truhart dragging me up to the front and introducing me to the then CAO, Dr. Santelises. And she said, we're going to have lunch and talk about education. And she invited me to a restaurant. Um, unbeknownst to the both of us, that restaurant um, had a similar name to a restaurant in Pikesville. And that's the restaurant I went to, so we missed each other. But we did meet. And in that meeting, I felt heard. And I hope that today um, I will feel heard again. I began my career in education full time um, at Independence this school year, and um, I've already seen student improvement. I remember one of the, maybe the third week of school, a student came to my class and said, Mr. Carbon, what are we doing today? I said, we learning. He said, Mr. Carbon, you crazy. <laughs> Three months later, that same student will come to my classroom and he'll say, Mr. Carbon, what are we doing today? I want to talk about Walter from A Raisin in the Sun because he be tripping. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I just want to point out that um, Independence has a new principal, an almost entirely new staff, and almost entirely new teachers. And as working professionals, we are no stranger to inheriting the shortcomings of others. I understand that this can be taxing and arduous as people hold you out to be burned by a fire that you did not make. We require an opportunity to do what we know we are capable of doing. And I am no stranger to opportunity. I speak on occasion about my story to my students in the hopes of encouraging them to be more. As a Baltimore City Public School student, I received 10 expulsions from this district that today I teach for. I graduated Northwestern High School with a 1.8 GPA. I went to Coppin State University and I asked just for one opportunity, one shot to show what I knew I was capable of. And today, if you walk the campus of Coppin State University, you'll find my face plastered in three different locations as a symbol of what an opportunity can make. An independence with a new principal and a 75% new staff as asking for an opportunity to be a symbol of rigorous change, a symbol of audacious hope, a symbol of courageous teaching, and by God, a symbol of taking Baltimore's finest who don't even realize that they're Baltimore's finest and creating unabashed, unashamed, and unwavering scholars. excited and why they, they took up all your time you good thank you very much our next guest is Paul Rao Madam Chair and the Board, this is Dr. Paul Rayo. Uh, I am Chairman of the Board of Transit Alliance Children's Guild, and I'm a speech language pathologist by training. <clears throat> and in 2011, I served as President of the American Speech and Hearing Association, 198,000 prof professionals. And I retired in 14 as the Chief Operating Officer and Compliance Officer at MedStar National Rehab. I wanted to first state that I understand the difficult and serious role you all have, and you know you take, and I know you take your responsibilities very seriously. The Trans Ed Board also takes its governance responsibilities seriously, as is the parent company, and we have complete faith in Monarch Academy and its new leadership team, and we ask that you give them a chance to continue to show your, our progress and growth. Our board is committed to helping Baltimore rise because if we know if Baltimore is successful, this, this, the surrounding community and the state is going to be successful. And we know that success is measured by the involvement of not-for-profits, the business community, neighborhoods, and city government working together for parental choice and kids first. The Children's Guild has been a committed partner in this endeavor as demonstrated by establishing Monarch Academy so that every boy and girl enrolled there would be ready to and motivated to learn. 
And the Guild has engaged that commitment by investing $15 million to renovate the, uh, this, the manufacturing plant of Coca-Cola. We're providing security staff and cameras to the school. We're providing $850,000 a year of trauma-informed care support, and specifically seven social workers, five therapeutic behavior aides, and student support staff to help children deal with trauma. We also are providing social emotional learning support through activities such as theater, dance, band, choir, robotics, student government, martial arts, basketball, and lacrosse. I'm going fast because I have a five minute speech in three minutes. A Monarch Academy has become the school of choice for the parents of almost 1,000 children every year, many of whom travel across the city to get to us and they have the value, they see the value of this Monarch experience. I believe the key to the success of Monarch lies in the fact that we treat each child as an individual and meet their needs, recognize and nurture who they are so they can grow up to be who they are meant to be. This is rooted in the 65 year history of the Children's Guild as one of Maryland's preeminent child rearing organizations. It looks like, uh, as uh, Councilman Clark spoke about, is the building, uh, the affordable housing. It looks like the city and private business and the neighborhood associations and the Children's Guild are doing their part to rebuild the city. And we are asking you as the school system to join us by assuring a school of choice called Monarch remain as an anchor to the neighborhood and the city. We may have started as a caterpillar, but we're now a Monarch butterfly and we're gonna fly to the heights. God bless you. Our next guest, and you may have to help me, Dr. Gray, I, I can't, the last name is Walker, and is it Ann? Constance, I'm sorry, I just couldn't read it. Is, okay. is the Walker is the Walker correct? That is correct. Okay, I'm gonna be try to be really quick. Um, I am a parent of a Northwood Apple um, scholar, and this school has been fantastic. Well, actually, I'm not a parent; I'm a legal guardian. My nephew is attending at the school, and when he started and he came in my custody, he couldn't even spell his name. He couldn't read or anything. And with the um, commitment from the school and the communication that we share, they have helped me and Antoine. He's now reading chapter books. He's in the fourth grade. He's reading on a fifth or sixth grade level. He ran for class representative this year. His confidence has soared. Um, the school, we've had a lot of transition. His parents are um, both um, addicts. And... He, they have been supportive of me. They have, um, we lost our, my, my mom, his grandmother, who was raising him, always helping me raise him this year. They were there with me through everything. This school has been a anchor in our community. Um, the doors are always open. They have after school programs, help for a school. He comes home. I've already did my homework. I said after school, they go to the library. They have activities during the summer for them to come up to the school, breakfast, lunch. I mean, he doesn't want to leave the school. It's a really good school for our children, and we would be do, be done. Excuse me, we would be we would be definitely um, done and miss justice if you were to close our school. It's a very good school, and they reach out to our community. It's everybody knows everybody. It, the grandparents come up to the school. It's a family. And we would really be losing a really good school if we were to close um, NACA. And um, I'm going to let you hear something real brief, how articulate my nephew is now from when he first started this school, when he ran for president. Let me see if I can turn it up loud enough and put it up to the mic. And this was recently. Uh, I think my phone died. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But we'll be back next week. Exactly. But we'll be back. But he spoke he spoke so well for and he read his speech. He spoke so well. And I was just so proud to be a NACA parent at that moment. Invite him to join us next Tuesday if you I like really wanted him to come. We had a misunderstanding and our bus left while we're sitting here tonight at nine thirty. So um, I really want him to come back and okay. for you to hear him. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Our next guest is Jonathan Melnick. Thank you to the school board for giving me an opportunity to say a few words about something I believe very special. I hope that you are listening carefully, and I say that with respect, because it's confusing to me that you would even consider the close of the Monarch Academy when you look at the quality of what we provide to the least advantaged kids in the city. So keep in mind that we're not just, we're certainly not a fancy school, but we take care of the kids that are the least advantaged. And I hope you know, at least I've been taught, you judge a society by the way it treats its least advantaged. I'm chair of the Board of Civic Works. I have been for many years with my executive director, Dana Stein. We have a partnership with Monarch Academy and CHUM, a profound partnership. And that partnership is, is really boosted by Mark Washington, who's here tonight, and he'll speak. And Mark came to this board uh, not that long ago, and as a result of his action, you all, and I don't think it was the same membership, but agreed to keep the REACH Academy open, which is part of my operation at Civic Works. So, Thank you very, very sincerely for recognizing the value of REACH Academy and agreeing to allow us to move into the new school at the corner of Hartford and 25th. I just want to make sure it's clear to you how much we appreciate it at Civic Works. But I want you to know just a couple of important things. One is that a lot of our kids would not even get a meal if they were not able to attend our school. And I wonder if you knew that. I have the honor to be involved with the two schools in Haiti, and clearly, our Catholic schools in Haiti, the kids just wouldn't get a meal if, in fact, they didn't come to our school. And that's the uh, Bon Samaritan and the, Monarch and the, um, the James Stein Academy. More importantly, there are a ton of the kids that come to Monarch that every weekend we need to give them food to be able to exist through the weekend. So this is serious stuff. I kind of was confused when I hear you and your concern about Monarch. In fact, city schools have been around for 100 years. How many years? And the... The, the scoring that you received recently, and how do you all justify that you've been around, let's say around 100 years, and we've been there four years at this location. Dr. Sandalisa, I was confused. I, I, by the way, was one of the eight people privileged to start WYPR in Baltimore. And I'm very proud of it, and I heard you on the radio the other day. Mr. Melnick. You're gonna come, I, I want you to yeah. know, I got here at 4.30, and it's okay. It's okay. But, but keep in, in mind, folks, that those of us that care, I got here at 4.30. I had my board meeting for Civic Works tonight that I had to miss because of this. I've been here respectfully that entire time, and with a quick motion, you decided we're going to go from five minutes to three. Just remember what we're about. I was born and raised in Baltimore in 1948, Clarence Road. I've been here the whole time. I'm 70. And you know what? It doesn't make sense that you don't look at the entire child and what we're doing at Monarch. And I will ask you or beg you for one thing. Can I ask and get a commitment from each one of you to join me or Andy Ross or one of our staff at Monarch to see our school? Because I was shocked to hear that so many of you, and, and I, I tell you, I was freaked about this, that have never even attended our school to see it. Okay, if, if, if I'm wrong, I apologize, Dr. Sandalisa, but I, I, I would appreciate if I could see the hands of those that have actually been to the school. Th that's fine. So that's one, two, three, four, like five or six people. Okay, well, I can tell you I was told differently. And, and thank you, and I appreciate it. I beg you all just if you could come and see what we're doing. And Dr. Sandalisa, just one last thought, and that is that 
on the radio, you made it clear, and I apologize if I have it wrong, you can't reduce a student to a test score. Is the challenge that was given to you on the radio. If you can't, then I beg of you to consider the value. And in the neighborhood itself, we have developments that are based on the idea that the school is going to stay. So I beg you to consider that, and I appreciate those that haven't been there to visit. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. And I apologize, Mr. Melnick, if you thought my, de my uh, decision to ask people to reduce the time was anything other than an effort to try to give as many people a chance to speak oh, as possible. it's absolutely unconscionable. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's absolutely unconscionable when you have the public that wants to come and support you. Because I respect what you do as, as a board member myself of many boards. School Sisters of Notre Dame, we have Notre Dame Prep, we have Notre Dame University, et cetera, et cetera. South Baltimore Learning Center, Chair of Civic Works. So as it turns out, you got five minutes. Thank you. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> With respect. Um, next is Mark Washington, and he signed up. Uh, Mark signed up with a person who I, I'm sorry, but I can't read the last name. Um, Malloy, maybe? McCoy. McCoy. There you go. And Mr. McCoy, when you when you sit, you can tell me your first name. I apologize. Richard McCoy. Richard. Yes. Okay. Great. Go ahead, Richard. Good evening, Dr. Sandalise and board members. My name is Richard McCoy. I'm president of Lake Clifton High School Alumni Association. Um, in behalf of my association and our community partners, we just want to thank um, Dr. Sandalise and the 21st Century um, staff for uh, listening to our concerns and working with us to make the new Reach High School building slash Lake Clifton uh, successful. Um, we had some concerns with the academics, and we're just so glad, and we're appreciative for all the input um, that you guys took to listen to our concerns and to make things happen. So thank you very much. Happy holidays, uh, friends. I uh, <laughs> just want to say that out there. I want to thank Mr. Melnick for uh, that uh, wonderful uh, statement he made about me. I, I really do appreciate it, and I appreciate his passion. Uh, about not only uh, Monarch, but more importantly about uh, the community. Uh, I want to echo uh, Richard's sentiments in regards to uh, the new facility going up at the uh, Harford Road and 25th Street. We certainly appreciate the spirit of cooperation that uh, we've enjoyed working with you all. And I know that she left early, but I do want to thank you all for working with us. And please pass on to Nicole uh, that I thank her uh, as well. Uh, in regards to Monarch Academy, I, I want to say this. Look, uh, early on when charter schools were being touted about as a savior, I was opposed to them. I was opposed to them when Kiefer Mitchell uh, came about uh, going through the city of Baltimore trying to encourage individuals to support <coughs> uh, charter schools. Uh, nevertheless, the politics were there, and charter schools were, of course, <coughs> given a vote of confidence. It was against that backdrop of voter confidence that we decided that we would try to make the best of the hand that we were dealt. And we were able to secure a willing partner in Monarch Academy. Now, the terms and stipulations that we have with Monarch Academy take an approach that deals with the whole and complete child. As Baltimore City Public Schools are prone to announce, um, housing insecurity is one of the biggest challenges you all face to a child's academic success. We understood that, and that's one of the reasons why we mandated to Monarch upon supporting their move to the community that we embark upon, upon this uh, housing initiative. Now, that being said, a few years ago, I was here before this board, different uh, CEO at the time, with the recommended close of Abbotston. At that time, we challenged the close of Abbotston, saying, wait a minute, the data was flawed, and that if given the opportunity for the community to work with Abbotston Middle School, we could, in fact, uh, uh, show a positive change. Well, we did that. Coldstream Homestead Montebello is the only community in Baltimore City with not one but two four-star schools. One of them is Abbotston that would not be open had the school system had their way previously under uh, that uh, past recommendation. Look, let's be clear on this. The destruction of a community first starts with the undermining of its people. 
And when we look to rebuild a community, we have to take into consideration that the fact that not only is education the biggest and most critical factor, but making certain that those individuals that we are entrusted to educate are given the necessities that they need to thrive and survive. We cannot close Monarch. I am asking that you all give me and the Coldstream Homestead Montebello an opportunity to go in and work with that school as we did at Abbotston, and I guarantee you that there will be changes made. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you both. <laughs> Sorry, next we have uh, Linda Lomax. Good evening. My name is Linda Lomax, and I am the community, um, I am the Healthy Neighborhood Coordinator for Coast Dream Homestead Montevallo. One of the things that I want to talk about is the talk track of the mayor. The mayor talks a lot about live near your home, live near your work, live near your school. And one of the things that we're trying to implement into that community is live near your school. We've had a lot of conversations with parents that want to live in that community while their child are going to Monarch um, Academy, as well as transitioning into one of the best high schools in the, in the nation, which is City College High School. I didn't attend City, but I'm gonna give them this kudos. So, um, <laughs> so one of the things that you, you know we, we tried to implement is going and finding resources for parents to, to be able to afford homes and become economically stable in that community. One of the things that Monarch has done is help build that community from what it was years ago up to now. I ask you to give Monarch the opportunity to prosper into the empire that it can be for that community as, as a starting school for those young, young individuals, our babies that we call and that live in that community as well as travel into that community as a safe haven one and and let us as a community work with the schools to come in and say hey we're here to help and support you and we ask the school system to do the same give us the opportunity they've only been here for four years give us the opportunity to say hey we're here we're willing to make the adjustments that need to be made, make the changes that need to be made to help these students prosper and stop being inconsistent with them. We've been so inconsistent with closing down schools um, because of one test score and not giving them the opportunity. And I ask that you, I plead with you, I beg with you. I don't have a problem with begging. I beg that you just give the opportunity for us to go in and help as a community, help the school that's in that community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lomax. Um, next person who signed is uh, Georgia Greenberg. Um, I encourage you, and I am sure that you will um, read the binders that we provided earlier. I did want to let you know that they have um, student letters as well as letters from teachers and parents. So, um, uh, Commissioners, Dr. Stanalisis, and city school staff. My name is Georgia Greenberg, and I'm a 20-year veteran of Baltimore City Schools. Additionally, I grew up in Baltimore City Schools, having attended Leith Walk, Roland Park, and Western. Coming out of college, I chose City Schools as the place where I wanted to spend my career because of both the positive experiences I had and the negative ones. I wanted to strengthen gifted and talented programming as it had been so critical to me. I also wanted to help with the bullying problem as I had been a victim myself. Most importantly, I wanted to serve the children of Baltimore City as I felt this was the place where I could have the most impact. I found myself as an alumnus of the school and because of timing, at one of the best K-8 schools in Baltimore City. City, many would argue. I taught there for 10 years and was an administrator for another five. My journey would then take me to what many would say was another of Baltimore City's finest K-8 schools. There is no question that I was lucky. I was able to pursue my passion for gifted and talented education. I was able to work with some amazing leaders who both interested and allowed me to serve in leadership positions and who showed me how to do new things, to learn processes, procedures, and how to build relationships. I met people from other schools and from central office that shaped who I am today. I will admit that when I was hired by Monarch Academy as the elementary assistant principal, it was over the summer. 
don't know what you're getting into, right? The building was beautiful and spotless. The administrators were new, and I hoped that we would be able to build a strong team together. During my interview, we spoke about my experiences with Dr. Mariel Hardiman, working with connecting brain research to effective teaching, and presenting on the topic across the country. Monarch also had a focus on combining best practices and instruction with the latest in brain research, and I was extremely interested. We spoke about how Monarch was not yet a gifted and advanced learner site. We are now. Um, but how I was very interested in bringing the program here to meet the needs of all of our students. But there was a lot I didn't know. I didn't know that as a charter school, that the Children's Guild is the operator, that there would be such a focus on working with children with emotional disabilities and with trauma in their backgrounds. I never guessed, looking at those beautiful murals with the brain-stimulating environmental enrichment that exists in this building, that so many of our children would go into crisis, rip down those boards and murals, and be hospitalized for periods of time. At my previous schools, the kids that hit, kicked, and bit other students and teachers were a rarity. Here they make up a good part of our incoming population. In my previous experience, back to school nights were standing room only, but last year we were strategizing on how to get parents to come out to events. I couldn't have known that we'd have such a new population. I never guessed that a fair number of teachers would follow the old principle and that we would even have to train or retrain so many new people. I honestly didn't even know what working for a charter school would entail. Longer hours, weekends, meeting after meeting. In short, I never guessed how hard this job would be. I also didn't know about the special resources that Monarch would have, and I know you've already heard about our behavior coaches, our additional clinicians, and some other things like that. Um, just to Ms. sum up quickly, I can honestly say that this is the most amazing place that I have ever worked. Granted, I'm only in my second year here, but I've been lucky enough to see it all come together. The administrators, all of us knew last year, have gelled into a true team. Teachers that were brand new last year, and you heard from a lot of them tonight, have worked very hard and become model educators. Teachers who left Monarch for whatever reason have been replaced by veteran educators. Children who have been through the worst trauma, who have watched one parent kill another right in front of them, who have been prostituted for their parents' benefit, who live with family members with severe alcohol and drug problems, who have parents in jail, who either live with someone or themselves are mentally ill or suicidal. These children have grown and blossomed in a way that I never would have guessed that they could have. I was simply inexperienced in working with these children in these types of situations situations, but I'm so lucky that I've been able to. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to provide you with copies, please. Yes, thank you. If you could provide, uh, Christian. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you. Our next guest is Karen Nottingham. Is it Nottingham? Is that right? Good evening. My daughter's a sixth grader at Monarch Academy. And on September the 13th, my daughter sat in Miss Gray's class and wrote her suicide note. I bought it here today. It was the end of the day. Miss Gray could have very well packed her off, sent her home. She'll be fine. She did mm -hmm. not. It was her first time meeting my daughter, her first time being in the class. She went and got her teacher from the year before. Ms. Vaughn did not, does not have my daughter for this year. Ms. Vaughn called me on the phone crying. There's a problem with Nia. You need to hurry up and get here. I work in Rockville, Maryland. It took me two and a half hours to get there. At six something, they were still there. They took my daughter down to the mental health counselor. They talked to her. They drew pictures with her. I took her to counseling the next day. When they asked her who would she want to help her, my daughter included Ms. Vaughn and Ms. Gray as her top three people that she wanted to help her. Monarch Academy, I understand, works on checks and balances. They have tests. They have curriculums they have to meet. They have scores they have to meet. But this is so much bigger than a test score. My daughter looks at these people like family because they are. When my husband died, she went to school and cried to them. She didn't cry to me because mommy was upset. And she didn't want me to hurt anymore. They hugged her up. They loved her up. And they took care of her last year when I could not do it. My lupus would not allow me to do it. When I was in the hospital, they picked her up and they made sure that she was okay. When that gentleman sat up here and said they make sure they eat, they make sure they eat. They make sure the lights are on. They make sure they are taken care of. This is so much bigger than just a test score. 
this is families, this is communities, like they spoke of, they have seen traumatic incidents come in, and they still come in and they try their best to learn. And my daughter is happy to go to school now. She has come from a place of wanting to kill herself on the 13th of September to now. She's telling her friends, you have to stand it for yourself. You have to speak out for yourself because we're here to learn. We got things to do. So please give Monarch a chance to teach these babies and be here for these babies so they will be here another day because at another school, I don't think my daughter will still be here because she had her plan all set out what she was going to do. And she knew that I had the medication available for her to do it. Thank you, Ms. Nottingham. Our next guest is Elijah Etheridge. Good evening, uh, Madam President, Madam Vice President, Dr. Santalises, members of the board. Uh, I have three issues that I want to address uh, this evening. And first, I want to just tell you how much I appreciate you and what you're doing in this late hour, so I'll try to be quick as well. Um, I wanted to echo the comments that uh, President Marietta English uh, made in her remarks earlier at the other meeting <laughs> this evening, and uh, that is to talk a little bit about the uh, student uh, code of conduct. Um, when Dr. Santelises first arrived as CEO, our very first meeting uh, with her and um, the chief of staff was uh, about a, a, a community forum that Baltimore Teacher Network held around uh, the increase of violence in public schools. Um, one of the recommendations that came out of that forum was that we wholeheartedly uh, support and believe that no teacher should have to suffer the indignity of having to face a student who have insulted them or assaulted them in a classroom. And as we have seen in recent news uh, throughout the city, there have been incidents where teachers uh, have had fights, have gotten beaten, um, students have been suspended, but eventually sometimes return back to the classroom. I have had a teacher who has suffered losing a finger and um, after two months of being out, returned to the school, but that student was in the same school and in the same class. And so I wanna appeal to the board to um, work with uh, the Baltimore Teacher um, uh, Union and Baltimore Teacher Network as we take another look at the student code of conduct and we will be coming forward with different uh, recommendations such as the one that I just mentioned. Secondly, I'd like to just thank the, uh, the board for the recommendation, um, well, for the, the administration for the recommendation to the board for the three-year uh, renewal for connections. Um, I also want to acknowledge the fact that we understand that there has not yet been a recommendation for independence, uh, but we certainly hope that you have heard uh, well the students who have come before you this evening. Uh, the principal, the board, uh, the Baltimore Teacher Network took very seriously our one-year um, conditional um, um, renewal. And one of the biggest things that we did that we thought would be the best move that we could make would, was to bring a new leader into the school. And we did that with Ayanna McLean. And you heard the witness from the students. I can't say it any better than they have said it. And we hope that uh, with the information that we've provided, Angela Alvarez and her, her, her staff, that as they review that, they'll make a recommendation to Dr. Santelises and then to you, the full board. And lastly, Roots and Branches. This is a gem of a school in a community that needs so much, that has so little. And I would implore you to take another look at Roots and Branches. I understand that we have a non-renewal recommendation, but if you take the time to dig a little deeper, um, you'll see that this is a school and this is a community that can ill afford a closure of a school. Um, it, 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 that is a community that certainly needs this school. The, st uh, the staff and the students have worked very hard this past year. We have just come on. I'm the new executive director. I've just come on uh, in the past eight months. We have plans for this school uh, that we would love to share with you. Uh, we would like you to give us, at minimum, a one-year uh, conditional renewal for Roots and Branches. So I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. Our next guest is Wallace Lane. Oh. 
That was Taya that just walked out. Is she okay? Thank you. Our next guest is Kevin, Kevin Swearinger. Good evening, Dr. Sandalise and members of the uh, school board. Um, I uh, feel a little, uh, um, remor little uh, reflective because um, as a product of Baltimore City um, school system, um, when I was in high school, I actually was a uh, school commissioner, a student school commissioner. Um, I basically um, attended uh, Calvertin Junior High School and Dunbar Senior High School, and I actually was a part of the school commissioner and, of course, the student leadership. So today I'm coming on behalf of Roots and Branches, and I want to give you a story but then also make an allegory. There was a friend of mine that was a uh, former employee of Baltimore City. He was a school policeman. He was going along fine, had a wife and children, and he had a stroke. And uh, his stroke, of course, led him in a coma, and he was on life support. Um, the decision had to be made whether to take him off or to uh, let him stay there. Uh, unfortunately, um, as his family thought about it, uh, they decided that um, they would consult with uh, doctors and get the best specialists and persons involved that he would actually, his life did actually matter. Um, he did recover from that stroke, and he's now working, and he's thriving. And I know that your job today is something similar to that because you hold in your hands the life supports of not only Roots and Branches but some other schools. I want you to know that um, as you make this very tough decision, that it's not so much the fact of the fact of what you're dealing with in the immediate, because I know the numbers, I know the figures that you're dealing with, but the thing about it is, consider if that his family had decided to pull the plug. Consider if his family would have decided that basically the cost or what have you was too much. Roots and Branches is in a community that I'm very familiar with. When I first went into education, I've been teaching for over 20-some years. I started Harlem Park Middle School when there was a high-rise that was imploded. I know the community, and the community has needs. And Roots and Branches, families and students deserve that those needs be met. So as you make the decision and you have the life support of Roots and Branches in your hands, I would hope and pray that you would make the right decision. Thank you very much. Our next, our next guest is Sherry Weaver. I'm Sherry Weaver. I'm a student at Connections, one of the great schools, a community-based art school. Um, and when I say student, don't laugh. I mean, because I've been there three years as the office manager, and I think I have learned a great deal. Um, I come from a background of private school, public schools. I've worked at private schools um, and public schools. My child has been to both, and I'm, I'm a product of uh, both schools. Um, being at Connections has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. I work with some great administrators, wonderful leadership team, a new principal for the last couple years, um, assistant principal, all the staff. I work in the main office with a great team. I get to see about 500 and plus students every single day. I've you know, learned all about them, about the backgrounds they come from. It's definitely brought my horizons. Like I said, I come from a private school background, so I learned a lot more about Baltimore City and about um, a lot of the struggles and the things that our kids bring to school. Um, we have a dynamic leader, and I know you have heard Mr. Brooks speak passionately before the board before and, and at other venues. Um, I see the students every day. Um, I work on admissions. We were at the Choice Fair. I think you saw our students shine um, doing their art performance here and also at the um, Choice Fair. I meet tons of parents. I market the school. I give them the spiel. I've had parents who, once the lottery's been over, they've come to me in tears. You would think their child just got accepted to Harvard or Yale. Um, that this is life-changing for them. We have parents busting the doors down to get into our school. I feel bad when we have two, 300 people on the wait list and I have to say sorry. Um, I see Connections community involvement. Um, they make a difference, not just in the greater Montgomery area. We got kids coming from Cherry Hill, East Baltimore, all over the place. Like I said, I see on a day-to-day -day basis the staff. I mean, we had over 100 people here 
from our staff. Some were out there, some had to leave, some of our students, you know, catching buses, parents doing whatever they need to do. Um, again, I came here to put my two cents or rather request for two additional years that I know Connections deserves. Um, also came here, I don't know if you see, we got these artsy shirts that our staff designed, five more years. So um, I've seen Connections evolve over the last three years. Because like I said, I have, I, people will say I'm talkative, I'm highly critical, but I'm very sincere. And when I came into the school, you know, there's some things that they've been working on. I know in their SERs they've made improvements. Um, you know, they got all the experts doing the data and the academic stuff. I'm more administrative. But I have seen that school change from one that I wasn't sure I would send my child to to one that now when I mark it and I talk about all the positive things, it's entirely true. They have made leaps and bounds in the last three years. We had stigmas to overcome because we're in the old Lamel building. People have the history. I don't know all the history from years ago, some of the other schools that have been in that building. But we have definitely turned that around. They've made difference in children's lives. You hear students up here crying and things like that. I see that on a day-to-day -day basis. I deal with the parents daily. Um, everything that I'm saying is here. I do appreciate the board here. I learned a lot about the processes here. But I do hope that each and every one of you on that board um, definitely consider giving connections the additional two years to not just prove they've already proved themselves but to really finish the work that they have to do our principal always says there's a war he, he's still in there and he's just moving up every year and I just wanted to say that and thank you thank you so much our next guest, next guest is David Cox Good evening, everybody. Um, my name's David Cox, and I'm an eighth grade teacher at, at Connections, a community school of the arts. And first of all, I'd like to thank you for the, um, the three-year renewal recommendation for our school. Um, honestly, I'm here because I'd like to see us get a five-year recommendation, what charter school wouldn't. Um, and there's reasons for that. <clears throat> um, I've been an educator for over 30 years, actually 32 years now, and uh, most of it has been out of out of the state of Maryland, uh, just north of the border in Hanover, Pennsylvania, and um, I came down to Connections. This is now my third year. I've just started my third year at Connections, and I've been blown away by what I've seen and what I've I've I've, I've seen happening at at Connections over the last three years. Um, the biggest thing is, is our students. Um, their excitement for learning, their tenacity. You know, when I, you know, I retired up there and I'm, I'm now, I'm double dip and I'm not going to lie, you know, and I love it. It's been re rejuvenating to me. Um, it's like I'm a brand new teacher again and, and I'm going to steal uh, Miss Weaver's thunder there. I feel like a student most days. They're teaching me all kinds of new, new things. And that's a good thing. But um, I, I've seen that we started giving the map test and we're giving it a lot so that our kids learn how to take those types of tests. And I see their scores going up every time that they take it. I also am seeing that they are getting very competitive with one another about those scores, which is a good thing. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a large number of our kids now that are starting in sixth grade at Connections and are staying there through their senior years. Um, I, this year's group of seniors, from what I understand, pretty much every single one of them is on college track looking to go to college, which is pretty incredible. Um, and I guess the biggest thing that I, that I really like about Connections as, as, a, as a teacher, is that, that feeling of community and, and family. Um, this, this morning I got to school, it was about 720. It's 19, 20 degrees outside, and there's like 30 kids standing outside waiting to get into school. School doesn't start till 9 o'clock. They love coming to our school. And, and for me, that's, that's huge. It's just really what it's all about. You know, and that's that feeling of community. They want to be there. And, um, and for that, uh, you know, I'm asking that maybe instead of the three, you look at giving us a five-year renewal. Um, I think with that, we can raise more funds for our school. It gives us more time to institute the changes that Principal Brooks has put into place. And it gives us, as teachers, um, additional time to teach. 
and I'm done. I see you. I see you. Okay. But uh, I, I just want to say it's like it, it's just been mind blowing for me. Um, you know, that first concert I, I saw assembly program with Bubba Dom and the drummers and and Mama Deidre and the dancers and I, I and I, I was blown away and I, I was sold on on the spot. So I'll get up and I'll go. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next guest is Ann Rossi. There's space up here for teachers. Come on up. And you too. Come on. In thinking about what to say tonight, come on. There are kind of two ways to go, and one I wanted to focus on what's right. Teachers work really, really hard for the last three years. Our SER last spring was really good, and I think it reflects the hard work of the teachers. Our teachers are here tonight in force because they believe in what we're doing. We have community representatives here with us. The Mission Continues is here. Build is here. Arlen Park West is here. Coach is here. He works with kids after school, 6 o'clock every night. This is what's good about what we're doing. I think it's really important that we think about how we can keep what's good in our community. We have a very small school. It's something we need to grapple with. We have kids that need our small school. We have kids who come with us, to us from all kinds of situations. Some are coming to us because they really want an arts integrated school. They travel across town. This is what they want. Some come to us from accident of, of geography. They live in the neighborhood, but they deserve a choice and they deserve something that is rich and meaningful for them. We had more kids here tonight. I appreciate you reducing this to three minutes because a bunch of my babies have already gone home to go to bed. Um, and these babies are going to be tired in the morning. But people are here because they care about our school. And I really value the work that the teachers have done. I value what the community has poured into the school. I value the folks that have come to see our school up and running. And I hope that decisions about our future get made by people who so see our school and see what we have to offer. Um, Working with BTN and with our board, we've got some ideas for how to make us viable in the community, how to fill empty spaces in our building. But um, it's really important to us that we keep this community going. And um, the reason why is behind me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, little man. <laughs> Got some sleep. Our next guest is also from Roots and Branches, Michael Plummer. That's 12 years of Catholic education with that hem and chip. Sorry. That's Plummer? I had to make sure I put on the right shirt. Wait, are you sure? Plummer, P L U W M E R. Thank you for taking the time and, and staying with us. I know it's a lot of work for you guys to be here so late. Uh, my name is Michael Plummer. I'm the Deputy Director of School Administration for BTN. Uh, I work for this gentleman right here. Um, uh, and I work with these folks right here. My, my presentation was this, but we are the voice of teachers. Um, and one of the families had to leave. So tonight I'm going to be the voice of a parent, if that's OK with you. OK? My name is Kimberly Avery. I have two daughters who attend Roots and Branches Elementary School. We have been a part of the Roots and Branches family since the doors opened seven years ago. My son was the first of my children to attend the school. I chose this school because his own school was a nightmare and unsafe. In his first year of first grade, he was very shy and had next to no confidence in, in himself or his work. Uncertain and sometimes unclear of his abilities, he would not participate in class discussions or activities. He would not try for fear of failure. But by the end of the year, with the help of his teacher, Miss Sarah, and me, his mom, he had started reading in front of his class 
mates with more confidence and answering questions. He would never have thought he knew the answers to. He spent the next four years with even more teachers that challenged him and gave him the tools he would need to be a great middle schooler. By fifth grade, he had come out so, come so far out of his shell, he was picked to be the MC for graduation. Now he is in his last year of middle school. My oldest daughter is now in fourth grade and thriving. Her first three years were a little rocky due to a disability. She was delayed in reading and math. She kept trying and her teachers were coming up with very fun and exciting ways to get her to retain what was being taught. She has come so far knowing that she has the support of her teachers and Roots and Branches family. I know that Baltimore City thinks it knows what's best, but I would bet my life on that my daughter had been in any other school with its crowded classroom, she would have went unnoticed and forgotten. I feel that if you close our school, you will be throwing our kids away. My daughters don't have many choices as far as a good to great schools where we live. Their, school, their zone school is scheduled to close at the end of the year also. That's her mom. What I wanted to say at the end is, I've been in the field for 29 years. And I can tell you, I walked into this school and I felt at home. I worked at the School for the Blind for 14 years. I thought that was my home. This organization, this school is, is my home. And I can tell you, these folks mean something to this community. So please, please take a look at what we've presented. We're not, we have, we have some things to work on and we will work on them. I give you my word. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is Allison Ambrose. Good evening. My name is Allison Ambrose, and I am a teacher at Dr. King. I spoke at the November 13th meeting about the impact closing a school has on academics, the increased school violence that can occur by combining schools, and the amount of programs that we offer scholars at Dr. King despite the claim that we are unable to offer rich, varied programming. We have held a series of, parent, of meetings with our families, and one of their main concerns is the safety of their scholars, especially given the violence and issues that have been plaguing Pimlico since they moved back into their building. They are worried about the adult animosity that exists from rivals on either side of Cold Spring. Families are afraid to send their children to Edgecombe because of this. Families express concerns about being unable to walk their children to and from school. The district has made this recommendation to close Dr. King, but has not shared their plan to combat the potential violence and has given no answers to our families' questions. Student safety is something that should be secured before making such a significant change. <clears throat> Families expressed other concerns as well. They were concerned that their children will no longer be able to participate in the after-school activities like they do at Dr. King because they will have to catch a school bus directly home after school. They wonder what enrichment opportunities will be available for their students <clears throat> um, if they are limited because of transportation. Families also stated that their children feel comfortable with the staff at Dr. King. They know the school and the neighborhood. Families feel safe knowing that their scholars have staff and neighbors protecting them as they travel to and from school each day. The school community feels like a family at Dr. King. Finally, families are concerned with what happens to the neighborhood when the school shuts down. When a neighborhood loses its school, it loses a foundation that builds relationships among residents and connects generations while it works for children. Losing schools makes it more likely that these neighborhoods will decay. Um, I read an NPR article that I'm going to quote from because the author of it was able to make my point, but in a way more eloquent way. Um, Neighborhood schools serve a human scale function. They orient us to our own histories. They serve as anchors of continuity in the places where we are from. They offer a touchstone to reconnect with way down the line. Schools are signposts in the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves and our community. The last time I spoke, I asked you to invest in us. I'm asking you this time to take a stand. Stand with Dr. King and show our children that they deserve to attend a safe school in their neighborhood. Stand with Dr. King and show our families that children's safety is paramount. Stand with Dr. King and show the community that they are worth investing in. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Our next guest is Tracy Brooks. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tracy Brooks, and I will be representing Monarch Public Charter School. I wrote you a letter, um, and I'd like to read that now, please. Dear members of the Baltimore City School Board, I plead with you to please hear me with both your ears and your hearts. It is with anger, frustration, and extreme disappointment that I appear before you today. My husband and I are proud and active monarch parents, and our family has been a part of the monarch family since 2011. There are hundreds of stories that could be told from other monarch families. However, I am here to quickly tell you ours. Our son was a third grader when he entered monarch, and our daughter was a first grader. Since the beginning of our son's tenure at monarch, he was an honor student and is presently a ninth grade theater student attending the Baltimore School for the Arts. He is currently on the honor roll, and we accredit his educators at Monarch for preparing him for, high, for his high school journey. Our daughter, who entered as a first grader, was diagnosed with a, with a learning disability and received an IEP in third grade. After struggling academically for a few years, she started making progress, major progress, with her special education and general education teams. Not forgetting to mention that the amazing visual, musical, and theatrical arts programs that are offered at Monarch have extremely been instrumental in her development and progress. She is presently earning A's and B's, <coughs> and she almost made the honor roll last quarter. Closing this state-of-the-art charter school would be a major devastation to our daughter because she is making wonderful progress and has an academic and administrative team that truly believes in her and encourages her to do her very best. Dramatic change in her last year would be a setback because change is extremely difficult for her. To allow what we believe to be inaccurate test results to determine if a brand new charter school should be closed is an outrage. The test you are basing some of your data will soon be obsolete, as it should be. Please allow our educators to teach and love our children and not become overwhelmed by unnecessary tests. In my opinion, our children and schools should not be responsible for schools from tests that should no longer be a part of our educational system. We chose to send our children to Monarch Public Charter School because we did not wish them to attend our, their zone school in our community. If this closure is to come to fruition, then as parents to our seventh grader, we may have to make the decision to rearrange our lives to homeschool our daughter in her last year of middle school. We will not permit her to attend a zone school where the test scores and student behaviors are more of a concern. Please do not allow this wonderful state-of-the-art public school to close due to numbers and stats. Our daughter, along with all the other students, teachers, and every other team member in Monarch Academy, deserves the opportunity to continue to make positive changes and not to be displaced due to technicalities and red tape. Thank you for your time, and we pray that you will give serious thought and consideration to this extremely serious and sensitive matter. Sincerely, me, Tracy Brooks, and my family, the Hatchet family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. Our next guest is Anne Marie Catrone. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Catrone. Good evening. My name is Anne Marie Catron, and I've been a resident of the city of Baltimore since the mid 80s. And I am one of the many people in this city that believe in this city. I pay a fortune in property taxes, and I listen to my grown daughters all the time say, Mom, why do you remain in a city? Why don't you move out of the city of Baltimore? I'm here because I believe in this city. 
and I'm here to support Monarch Academy. When an institution comes into a neighborhood and they're willing to put in $15 million to invest into a brand new building, an additional $1.7 million for additional services, when this community also is willing to invest in the local community around that school. This city talks all the time about flight, people leaving this city. You not only have a charter school coming in and making massive improvements in that neighborhood, but also developing and pulling up that neighborhood. I'm asking you to look beyond the scores and look beyond the way you looked at this institution. Because Monarch should be here in Baltimore. And this city, this school board and the city of Baltimore should encourage institutions to come in and invest. And this is what this institution has done, the Children's Guild and Monarch Academy. And I wish you to reconsider your consideration on, on looking at Monarch Academy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next guest is Mr. Robert Kentron. Thank you for your consideration. I know it's your job, but by golly, it's something uh, that we do appreciate. Uh, I'm too old to learn how to do this stuff on a iPod, uh, what do they call it, iPhone. But I have learned how to do it on an iPad. To make it brief, I've been a Baltimore resident for most of the past half century. Honey, we spent our years here in 68 to 73. In fact, we started out right across the road from uh, Northwood Opold Church, and one of their schools is well represented here this evening. We are city of residents. We are committed to the city. We always have been. We are committed to a new way of doing things in America that is, goes beyond pure, simple identity. We are not the norm, and we're proud of it. I'm speaking of everybody in this room. I'm a former professor of sociology from Morgan State. I'm also taught geography at, the univers at uh, UMBC. And then I went and, out and founded and operated an international financial syndication firm. I'm well recognized in my community, my professional communities for what I have done. I'm also the only living, surviving Rotary International officer in Baltimore City. I know people. It's not that I know the right people, but I know what people are like. I know the value of people. And they aren't all rich, and they aren't all smart, and they aren't all together. What I have heard tonight, frankly, intimidates me. I am really impressed with what you have heard. I've also been impressed with the f way this forum has been conducted. But I'm equally impressed with the incredible talent that we have before us in this city luckily for the last 20 years, even though I am not a professional educator, I know people. And we have a talent in this community that we do not want to lose in Dr. Andy Ross. I would suspect that most of us here don't have a chance to know Andy Ross very well. And even I don't pretend to know him that well. But I know what he's accomplished at the Children's Guild. I know what he's capable of accomplishing. I know his commitment. And when it comes to commitment, there is no commitment greater than those of the people that I surround myself with. I pride myself on being around good people. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for your energy and your effort. I hope and pray that you will come to the right conclusions regarding not only the Monarch Academy, but frankly, independent school, 
and roots and branches and the other people I've heard from tonight that have the passion that they need to make themselves successful. And with your help, it'll happen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next guest is Sarah, Sarah Aguda. Good evening. Um, I want to first to thank you for your, your kind attention this late in the evening. As a, an educator in elementary school, I know how hard it can be towards the end of your day. Um, my classroom this year has a window that takes up the entire exterior wall. Um, I look out into our neighborhood before my students arrive in the morning, and I see the buildings across the street from our school. Some of them are very well kept up. They're obviously home to a family. Many of them, however, are boarded up, abandoned. It always gives me pause seeing those neglected buildings and the wasted potential there. I wonder if my students feel that too. Roots and Branches has set out to be a school that is safe. While there is no perfect solution, students in our school report being comfortable enough to admit when they are upset, frustrated, struggling, and then being willing to share it with a trusted adult. One student in particular who transferred in at the beginning of this year was bullied to such an extent at his old school that he frequently faked illness to get out of going to school. Within one week at Roots and Branches, this student reported to his mother that he was fine, that he was happy. He has yet to take a sick day. This speaks to something that we are doing right, creating a safe space for our students, particularly students who face so many uncertainties in their daily lives, is essential to their ability to learn. And I feel like this is something that we do well. When we first went through the renewal process several years ago, one of the issues we discussed as both a staff and then as a leadership team was our test scores. Our charter is based around bringing joy into learning, into integrating the arts, and creating stu increasing student desire to learn through individualized instruction. We had spent time doing all of these things, but realizing that our internal data, our own personal scores, did not match our park data we set out to examine this data carefully and build a writing curriculum and engender a stronger sense of the testing process in our students. We've seen growth in our park scores over the last three years. Internal data tells us that currently 81% of the fifth graders at Roots and Branches are reading either on or above grade level. Students who have graduated from our school have moved on to success at middle school at places like Lily May, Crossroads, Connections, and Roland Park. Our school is like no other I have worked at. We have developed rich arts partners, including being a pilot school with Everyman Theater for their yearly residency in the theater arts. We have earned the title of Arts Everyday Mentor School this year, working with newer partner schools to help them bring arts education into their classrooms. Our students engage in residencies and workshops with local teaching artists to enrich their education. They have created works of art, performed as a steel drum band, composed music, written operas. Our, student art, our students' art has been displayed at the Walters Art Gallery. Through the arts, our students are finding joy and success in their learning. They are learning that they are capable and their potential is not limited. I see that I'm out of time, so I'm going to kind of skip down. Um, our school deserves support. I invite you to look at your, our internal data. I invite you to talk to our graduates. I invite you into my classroom to watch our students learn. And I invite you after that to a conversation about what else we can do. Because there's always something else. There's always something we can do to improve. As a teacher, I work to instill that in my students. And I am asking you tonight to let my students know they are worth going that extra mile for. They're worth a second chance, because they are. Thank you. Thank you. Our next guest is Tequila Stokes. Mr. or Ms. Stokes?
then our next guest is Corey Cummings. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you. One of the things I really want to uh, address is that uh, closing Monarch, it means that uh, if you close the school, so you're going to overcrowd public city schools? It, it's, it's really important that, uh, you know, we keep the school open for the simple fact is that uh, my son, he, he's one years old. Uh, he had a speech problem, and Monarch is the only school that really helped him with it. So it's like, you know, uh, uh, certain things that Monarch has given us, as far as like dojo points, I'm able to, to talk to his teacher one-on-one -on -one and things like that. He, he's really learning. He really appreciates going to school. And um, I really can say that Monarch is definitely like a family. It's not just like a public school. I'm not disrespecting any other schools, but, you know, uh, that's the reason why we're still here. And I really appreciate all y'all hearing us out right now to hear our story, but it's very important that uh, about our, our child's education because it's all about a strong foundation. And that's what Monarch brings and gives to these, these kids and families. If we don't have a strong foundation, if there's no strong foundation, there's nothing. It's not going to be the bill. And that's what Monarch has given us, our children, a strong foundation. And that's the reason why we're here. If the shoe is on the other foot, wouldn't y'all want y'all children to have a strong foundation? So that's the reason why I'm here and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for my son because he loves his school. And, um, you know, kids listen. So me and his mother was talking and he overheard about the school closing. And, you know, he started crying. So, you know, things like that. So, you know, I just wanted to have y'all, you know, in the consideration of, of thinking about, you know, uh, our kids' f uh, future and everything else. It's, it's really important that, uh, you know, we keep this school open. So that's all we got to say. Thank you for being hearing me out. Thank you very much for taking the time. Our next guest is Juanita Bond. Just apologize to Miss Bond and others that we went so long. Um, our next guest is Sherelle Witherspoon. I know the Witherspoons are here. Sorry, uh, okay. I just came to say thank y'all to for the thank you to the board for allowing us to take the opportunity to build a community school in the Sandtown Winchester area. Uh, it was a lot of data and a lot of hard work, but we believe that we came to the best recommendation that we could for the community, and that was to. Uh, because we need one head to close because it wasn't enough school students to sustain both schools. And uh, we just really thank y'all for giving us the opportunity to uh, get community point of view. And so that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to say thank you. And that's why we're still here. Just to <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Ms. Witherspoon. You. Next up is Courtley Witherspoon, Jr. You're still awake. You still awake? I can't believe it. Are you? But you say you can't believe you're still awake? No, I, can't. I know. <laughs> yeah, me either, dude. <laughs> Hello, board. Today we want to make a brand new school. I have two great schools. Have lots of resources, but one school has to close, and we are working together to build a school. And every day at school. I bring up the conversation to my peers and explain to them why we are building a new community school. To have more resources and partners, but most importantly, to keep the middle school option, to keep siblings together. Yeah. Thank you. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Um, Mr. Witherspoon, uh, Junior. Mm -hmm. We have a question from Commissioner 
uh, McFadden. This young king I saw uh, this morning. I saw you too. Did, uh, <laughs> and um, he helped me learn a little bit more about the wit and wisdom curriculum. Tell me the last book you read in, in class. The last book we read was uh, Love That Dog. Mm -hmm. How'd you like that book? It was pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. He it was. was it was pretty emotional because of uh, the main character I forgot his name but he had the tragic loss of his dog and I have a dog and I I know how I would feel if that happened to me mm -hmm. so it's like <sighs> <laughs> and and this is him in school today also. He, great, great job tonight. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, Courtly Witherspoon Sr., thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I, every time I come before the board, I talk about the communities, um, how communities oftentimes feel left out of processes. And if communities feel left out of processes, um, the end doesn't always justify the means. And people can't be asked to sustain something that they weren't a part of. And so I really, really appreciate Dr. Santalisas and uh, Ms. Alba Reyes uh, and Ms. Uh, Cohen's Perkins and the list. There's just so many people who have been so intricately involved in challenging us as a community to uh, get information, the type of information that we're not typically uh, having access to. And um, I think whatever territorialism took was taking place at one point in relationship to all of this whole process, I think it's completely disappeared. Uh, what we see is we don't see two different school communities, we see two separate schools coming together for the purposes of consolidating resources and for the purposes of being able to provide the best quality education we can for youth that really matter but that are often forgotten about. And um, I can't say how grateful we are uh, to the board for affording us an opportunity just to be a part of this process so that we can testify to the fact that there are opportunities for government and community to be able to effectively work together. And I believe that this is a product that we can sustain, this merged school environment, because we were part of the process. People asked us how we felt, and we were heard, and our feelings were taken under consideration. And uh, we are not uh, one school asking for uh, anything from the board. We are Sandtown community coming before the board asking for an opportunity to have a community school with programs that will help to be a hub to a community that has known hurt and that has known pain. We know that in 2015 what happened in Sandtown, but I think that this is part of the renewal because the first thing people saw in Sandtown after the riot was a new police station. That was the first thing that came to Sandtown. But I think the Baltimore City Public Schools is leading the way to create, to assist the community in creating and empowering us to create a community school that can really be a hub to a hurting community. And before I take my seat, I want to say that I look forward to the opportunity to be able to talk to other school communities uh, about this process because we recognize that this is a template uh, because we know that there will be additional schools that have to be closed but we believe that communities should be heard like we've been heard in this process and that if we can be heard, we can support the process and we can help to sustain the product. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. And we appreciate uh, your, your sustained participation and I, I just wanna take this opportunity since Ms. Alvarez is still here to acknowledge uh, uh, her and her staff for the extra time put in to do this. You're right, it is a template and, and we, are glad you appreciate it because and we, uh, we have learned something about a new way to do this. So thank you, Dana Paulson as well. I mean, there's just been so many great people. We Thanks, Dana. It. Yep. Thank you. Is Miss Bratcher here, Jarrell? Then Mr. Witherspoon, you had the last word. Uh, I don't know. Benediction. 
<laughs> so we appreciate um, everybody's patience for what was a long process. Um, it seemed more important to have to hear from everybody than to uh, stick to some arbitrary two-hour time frame. So um, with that, uh, before I close, I'm going to remind people that we're going to do this again, some version of this, next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Um, we will also uh, post, after we have a chance to ponder the options, uh, there will be a special board meeting where we will uh, revisit and um, vote on the Da Vinci proposal. Um, with that, can I have a motion to adjourn the public forum? A motion made by Commissioner Hassan. Do I have a second? Commissioner Richardson, all in favor? Motion passes 8 to 0 with one absent. And with that, we are officially adjourned. <laughs>